Let's take a look at the armor, both steel plating and transparencies, that were designed into the B-17 bomber to protect the plane's vital systems and crew members. Since steel armor is heavy, it was only located in selected areas, as shown in red. By the way, steel has a density three times that of aluminum. The B-17 bomber's threats came from two sources ground artillery exploding flak projectiles like you see in this figure. If you look in movies or documentaries and you see these black puffs of smoke, those are from ground artillery shells fired from usually 88 millimeter flak guns. Before the soldier loads the cartridge into the breech of this gun, he's going to set the fuse. The fuse was timed at about 30 seconds. At the end of that 30 second duration, the projectile would explode, and they're trying to rain shrapnel on the critical vital systems of the airplane. Bomber threat came from fighter interceptor machine gun bullets and or 20 millimeter cannon high explosive mine splinters. The Germans deployed single engine fighters like the Messerschmitt ME 109 and or the Falkwolf F-190. When you take a look at the distribution of bombers that were destroyed in the European theater, what we find is that flak contributed 53% of all destroyed bombers and fighters contributed 47% of all destroyed bombers. The plane's armor was fabricated from ballistic steel with gauges that varied from an eighth of an inch all the way to 0.6 inches. The thicker 0.6 inch steel plates were designed to stop a standard 30 caliber bullet. The ballistic transparencies on the other hand consisted of a bulletproof glass material that was about two inches thick. Let's start at the tail gunner's position. His job was to protect the bomber from fighter interceptor stern attacks. He manned his station while in the kneeling position and he was facing aft. He sat on a bicycle seat, not shown in the graphic, made by Schwinn. His crew station was protected by connected steel plates as shown here. His sighting pane was a ballistic glass. Base gunner stations, they were also protected by armor panels just below the waist windows. This graphic shows the right waist gun armor plates. Moving forward to the ball turret gunner station. His position, and let's look at this expanded view, his position was actually better protected more so than any of the other nine crew members. First, he was sitting on a 0.6 inch steel plate. Second, the turret hatch was constructed of a quarter inch thick steel plate. Third, his legs were located between the 50 caliber machine guns. The machine gun side case receivers were constructed of a thick steel, and this provided a degree of protection to his lower legs. Fourth, he was manning this crew position while he was in the fetal position. This minimized his body area exposure to gunfire and flak. The ball turret's viewing ports were not ballistic, only plexiglass or a tempered glass. View looking inside the ball turret gunner station. This is the gunner seat, which is 0.6 inch steel. This is the gunner hatch, which is a quarter of an inch. This is a close-up view of that ball turret gunner hatch. And this is a close-up view of the ball turret gunner seat. The radio room operator, pilot, and co-pilot seats were also lightly armored. The flight deck windscreens were fabricated from a two inch thick ballistic glass. Planning on releasing a video on crew flak vests later. Stay tuned.